finally got an answer about something that I've been curious about for a while now, which is the origin, meaning, and symbolism of heraldry, otherwise known as the coat of arms, with all the strange symbolism, mean-looking animals, and having to do with rank and pedigree. And we can learn a lot from symbolism or symbolic language in pictures if we know the language and we understand it. Showing some different pictures of royal heraldry. So learning about that is what this video will be about. And how I learned about the heraldry and the origins of it was by watching a detailed historical documentary about Scythians who are referred to as the most savage barbarians of all and referred to by Herodotus and also in the Bible as well. But the documentary that I watched was presented by a British historian who graduated from the University College of London and who specializes in European pagan traditions of the Anglo-Saxon and Norse people, which from what I can tell he's very impressed with. He does not come from the viewpoint of Christian at all. And I'm going to link his documentary um, in this video in the description box. But here's what he said. What he said was that Euro European medieval heraldic motifs, so coat of arm motifs, come from Scythian artwork and tattoos, at least the animal portion. That's where it originated. And that Scythian artwork is based on animal predation, which is just a fancy way of saying how predatory animals prey on other animals and their rank within the animal kingdom of that preying. That's where he said it comes from. Predatory animal artwork from the Scythians. And here's, so this one was some of their artwork showing a snake, and I'm not sure what that is, but as a predatory situation. Here's some flash of tattoos, Scythian tattoos, that have some of the predatory animal scenes. And this one will show as somebody has it, and then this one was actually taken from a Scythian mummy. And it's known that they kept the skin of their victims, and this one looks like it's titled Scythian Belt Buckle, likely belonging to the victor. Anyway, <laughs> um, the definition of predation is a biological interaction where one organism, the predator, kills and eats another organism, its prey. So that is why the heraldry usually depicts all of these predatory animals. And he said for the Scythians, the animal predator tattoos and art probably re represented tribal affiliations, but it's also likely that they had mythological reference. So each form of predation would have symbolized a religious mythological history. Think about that in, in terms of heraldry. And I suppose this is why most of the animals in European heraldry are myth mythical or mythological creatures, you know, predatory type creatures like this one. You've got the dragon, lion, predatory, it's a lion leopard, snake. Eagle, wolf, wild boar. So that's a big boom, huh? The royal coat of arms that they're so proud of represent their bloodline or their tribe, but the origins are of the predatory nature of the animals used, and those animals have mystical religious symbolism 
which ornated, originated with a vicious, predatory, barbaric tribe, the Scythians, who we've been talking about. Holy Spirit, please help me convey this message. So, a little bit about these Scythians, which comes, this comes directly from this historian who specializes in these ancient tribes, culture, their practice, their pagan religions, and he's the one who's reporting all this, and he's not a Christian. In fact, he mentions in his video that his own arm, which I'm showing right here, is tattooed with the lion of his own family crest, dating back to medieval heraldry. So what does that tell you? But he himself reports in his documentary about the Scythians. I'm just going to review what, about them, what he reports. They're a nomadic barbarian Eurasian people during the Iron Age, which in Eurasia would have been about 1000 BC until about 100 AD. And they spread all over Europe, interbreeding with other tribes and cultures. They were famous around the world and written about by the Greeks, the Assyrians, the Indians, Chinese, Persians, and also Herodotus, the historian, and also biblical writers. They were called step horse lords. Horse because they were equestrian. Whoops. It does look a little bit, this British guy does look a little bit like that guy with the pointy hat, though. Don't they wear that? Anyway. And then they were called step horse lords. Horse because of Aquarian and then equestrian and then lords because they believed they were descendants of gods like other Indo-Europeans. Like the Nephilim. And a biblical reference to the Indo-Europeans would be the Hittites. And they took their religion from other Bronze Age Aryans who had classes of gods that included both good and evil ones. But both of those classes, both good and evil, were taken from words meaning begat of the sky. And one of the examples is the Germanic god Woden, which probably translates to the Norse god Odin. But they worshipped the entire pantheon of Indo-European gods, just like the Greeks, Romans, Indians, and their gods were the likely the same fallen angels and or Nephilim, but just with different names, like we mentioned before. But the most disturbing deity was the underworld snake-legged goddess, Artempasa, who they say was the ancestor goddess of the Scythians via her son, Scythes, who was fathered by the Scythian Hercules. And again, this goddess is represented in other cultures with other names, such as Echidna in Greco-Roman mythology, so-called. Their pagans included shamanism, divination, magic, mummification and burial mounds, blood rituals such as drinking blood, human and animal sacrifice, cannibalism, and a transvestite priesthood. Whoops. But their physical attributes were red or blonde hair, blue or green light eyes, tall and very strong with the noble class being larger than the commoners, and a lot of tattoos. They wore the skin of their victims and did other things with it ceremonially or ritualistically, such as burning it mixed with cannabis and opium, all mixed together with the skin. And archaeology also finds a lot of drug use like cannabis, opium, stimulants. By the way, Latin cannabis comes from Greek, but the earliest recorded term for the drug was transcribed from a Scythian or Thracian word, cannabis. And this information that I'm sharing about them is all based on archaeological evidence and then cross-referenced against the writings of the groups that I mentioned earlier. So it's likely all true. And I want to mention that it seems like there's an increased interest in these Indo-European races and their pagan and pantheistic religions. It just seems to be gaining a lot of positive acclaim now that we're in the end times. In the documentary I watched, all of the comments were positive 
with the commenter seemingly impressed with the culture and the practices and even wanting to emulate them and identify with them. And I mean, for all we know that the other Christian comments may have been removed by the channel or whoever, but so in summary, these so-called elite royals are king gods represent themselves through their heraldry and their heraldic sim symbolism as predatory animals. Mythical hybrid monsters originating with the most barbaric people in history. And remember that in the Bible, God ordered these type of people wiped completely out, including everything they owned. So this is just an example of what we as Christians can learn about our enemy based on history and also symbolism, which is a huge part of their language. If we kind of start learning their language and also learning about history. And I think we should because we do have an enemy. A spiritual one, yes, but also a physical one because these bloodlines are real people, or at least they present as people. And they're affecting our reality in our lives while we're still here on this plane. And everybody who's fussing about what's going on, I think you need to understand wh where it's originating, who it's coming from, what the head of the snake is. And it seems based on their heraldry alone and the history of it, that they're telling us in their own language what they're branded and represented and proud of their predatory nature. Thank you.